with your hot and techy brother, the city bird SUV. Gujarat vs Delhi is match number 32. Both these teams won their last outing. Gujarat haven't played in nearly a week. Delhi beat Lucknow in Lucknow on Sunday. If they can win in Ahmedabad, they go level with the Titans. What can we expect from this? Let's build up to it on Maruti Suzuki Arena. Presents ESPN Trick Info Timeout in the company of Mitch McLennigan, Ian Bishop and Wasim Jafar. No Mitch Marsh already and now David Warner could be out for Delhi. That's, these are sizable blows for a team still trying to get the wins under their belt. They had Fraser McGurk score the runs, Mitch. But how do you expect them to line up? Is there a case to bring Nokia or Jai Richardson back? Yeah, look, first and foremost, both significant losses to, to their side. David Warner is such a veteran of the IPL, holds that top order together. But we saw a very exciting player in Fraser McGurk. And I just imagine that he'll, he'll go from number three up to opening. Um, he's done that role before, and uh, I think that's a very good opening partnership. The question is, uh, where you get Shea into the, into the lineup, I think he's going to be critical for them going forward. And, and do you have him at three? Or do you slide him to four just to break up the right-handers? And I think they might go Porrell at four and, and Shea to, to uh, oh, sorry, Porrell at three and then Shea to number four. So that's probably the only real change I see at the top. Who they bring in as their other uh, local batsmen will be interesting. Um, we're seeing you probably have a few ideas on that. But it does open it up for Onrak Nokia to come into that side. But I'd like to see him used in that side in a different role. I don't think he should be bowling... Two, uh, two of the last three overs. I think you've got Khalil there who, who can do a job to the right-handers at the end going across them. And I think Mushe, um, uh, Mukesh Kumar, I think he's, he's high quality. He bowls very good depth. So I think you could use Nokia in more of an attacking role, a little bit more up front and then in the middle. Fish? Yeah, I mean, Shea Hope played last game and he, he can play in different modes, right? He can open the batting, he can bat at three, he can bat at four for you. So I, I suppose it depends on the start. I do like to see McGurk go up top. He's an exciting uh, person. I thought the bowling lineup, though, in the last game, it clicked. Mm -hmm. uh, Mukesh will get better. Getting cool deep back was a, a big fillip for them. So it was good to see that firing is just who they bring in as the extra batter. Um, that is going to be the key fit for me. Among the domestic options, they You'd imagine they have to slot someone in now. Uh, is, is it when they can unleash Kumar Kushagra? He's only got that one outing against Mumbai, which came late in the chase. Hmm. Him or Ricky Bhui look like the only options? I mean, both are very different. Uh, they paid a lot of money for Kumar Kushagra. Uh, but his numbers in domestic uh, T20s are not that impressive. But they must have seen something. Uh, so, I mean, they could actually bring him in. Uh, he's, he's a possibility. I would probably go to Ricky Bhoi because I think he's, he's more experienced. He, he was unfortunate in both the dismissal. He was strangled down the leg side in the first one, got a good delivery from Berger in the second one. So I'll stick with him because I, I thought he batted out of his position. Uh, number three is not his number. He bats at number five. So <coughs> you probably give him an opportunity at, at the number that he plays. Uh, and he plays spin really well. Uh, so I'll probably go with Ricky Bhoi. And then probably Abhishek Porel. I mean, it's a good idea to, to bring Abhishek Porel at three, but you want Rishabh Pant to bat at four. So that's another thing. Uh, but I mean, if the openers give a good start, you could slot Shea Hope straight away and then Rishabh Pant at, at four. Well, see, if they did bring in Kumar Kushagra, but we saw against Mumbai, he almost didn't bat in that big chase. We, we, what's his best position if they were going to bring him in? They'll, they'll have to bat him at five. Oh. Uh, I'm guessing he can't get, he can't bat anywhere below one and four. Yeah. Uh, so number five is probably his position. That's why I feel somebody who's, who's not played in the IPL before to come in in such a high yeah. pressure Important game. game yeah. 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 So I feel Ricky Bowie should, should get another yeah. couple of opportunity while David Warner is unfit. All of that automatically means a lot more weight for Rishabh Pant to carry. He has carried Delhi's uh, middle order Whenever he's been around, if you look at Delhi's numbers from 2022, Pant has scored nearly 30% of their runs in the middle overs in the 17 innings where he has batted through that phase. And now in the absence of Warner and Marsh, that's just more responsibility for him to shoulder. Well, he's captain and, and he's an international player and he's highly thought of. So I, I don't think that'll be anything strange for him. However... I would say that there are other players around him who are of value. I love the way Tristan Stubbs 
has gone this season. I, I think he's been playing superbly well and not a lot of people have talked enough about it. He's been striking the ball beautifully, right? And he's a young man in form as well. And Shea Hope, obviously, if he's still in that 11, um, is a senior player in the West Indies team when he plays. Now he captains the 50 over team. So I think that that responsibility can be spread and alleviate too much focus on Rishabh to allow Rishabh to continue playing in the manner that he's gotten runs this season. Yeah, and what, what Pant's return has done is instantly uh, improve Delhi's strike rate through that middle phase. You look at the last three seasons, Delhi were about mid-table when it came to strike rates through over 7 to 16 in 2022. They, that dropped to rock bottom in Pant's absence in 2023. And now you can automatically see the increase. It's 140 that Delhi are going at in the middle phase so far this season. But is that an approach that Pant can sustain when he knows that there is not a lot of experience around his, around the rest of his batting lineup? Well, I mean, knowing Rishabh, if he's the only batsman in the top seven, he'll still play the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't want to add him another, you know, more pressure on him. Yeah. He's already under, uh, you know, he's, he's playing itself is a big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's captaining the side and they... They've had some very bad games at the start of the tournament. So, you don't want to put any more pressure. If he comes good, he's going to play the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this format, you don't need to cluster your mind too much. You need to back your instincts and play freely. I think Bish's point was, was really important. Um, Tristan Stubbs is in great form. Uh, you've got Shea there, who's an experienced international player. And then, likely, if it's not with either of those two guys that he's batting, it's going to be with an opener who's in on some runs, whether it's Privy or Fraser McGurk. So I think we may be looking at it too much in terms of more pressure on him. I think he's always going to be batting with a high-quality batsman who's either in form or has got runs on the board when he comes into that partnership. Yeah, I think each of those guys, if you look at those guys from one to six, they either have good reputations or burgeoning reputations. Mm. So I don't see too much of that focus mm. on, on the show. All right, let's shift focus to the Gujarat Titans, for whom Mohit Sharma has been such a key component of their bowling attack in the last, since 2023. But he's gone at 11s in the last few outings and conceded 51 in the last game away at Rajasthan. Uh, his economy rate has been a major point of difference for their bowling attack. Mm -hmm. If he starts leaking runs, that becomes a cause for concern with their bowling plans. Yeah, you've got to marry it up with the wickets that he takes as well. Um, that's, a, that's a key run rate stifler for the other bowlers. Um, I think going back home is going to be very important. Um, his style of death bowling suits the bigger ground square, uh, obviously with a lot more slowball bounces and his change-ups. So I, I think he's yeah, seen a, a return to, well, form in terms of his economy rate uh, in this game so the, coming up. What do you think explains this increased economy rate? Has he perhaps become a bit predictable with his slower balls? I think that could be a factor. Um, batters, uh, I suppose, sitting back, I think it was Shashan Singh when they played Punjab uh, and just sat back and, and pulled a couple. And I remember watching it. And, and then when they were playing, I think it was LSG, I think it might have been in Lucknow, they were doing the same thing. So I don't think the solution, if that is the case, where batters are sitting back and waiting for the slower ball as one that comes regularly, is hard to adjust to because his pace on delivery, I think, is still good. When he bowls that pace on Yorker, it's still a heavy ball. So all he has to do is sit back and think, how do I maybe make a different ratio of deliveries and put more pace on deliveries and then use that slow one as a little bit more of a surprise? Right. Give us a prediction, Vaseem. Gujarat, Delhi, who are you backing? I'd probably back uh, Gujarat. Bish? I'm going to go, yeah, Gujarat. 3 0? Yeah, look. <laughs> I think it's. Oh, there's so much danger in that Delhi batting lineup. Yeah. I love it. Uh, but I think Gujarat at home will be too strong. All right. The verdict's clear on the panel. The only previous meeting between these sides in Ahmedabad, though, had gone Delhi's way. A low scorer that they won by five runs. All new hot and techy breath up. The city bird SUV.